Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our seventh and the last lesson on the first topic of Form 4, which is called Thin Lenses. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day, which states that life is an echo. Whatever you choose to send out will always come back to you in an expected way. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the third application of the thin lenses. So the third application is what we call the human eye. So the human eye usually consists of a crystalline convex uh, or a converging lens. Its purpose is simply to refract uh, the light, of course, from the object, um, then, of course, and focus it onto the retina. Then the human eye usually has the retina, which is simply a point whereby the images are usually formed. So it usually has the cells that are very sensitive to light. And uh, the other part within the human eye is what we call the iris, which simply controls the amount of light entering the eye by simply changing the size of the pupil. Such that when the pupil is made large, more light is uh, allowed to enter that particular eye. Then when the pupil is made small, a uh, little amount of light is allowed to enter that particular eye. That is why when you enter in a room which is very bright, uh, you tend to close your eyes. Uh, that is, you reduce the, uh, the size of your pupil so that you only allow small amount of light to enter your eye. Similarly, if you go to a dark room, you are likely to open your eye fully. That is, you are opening your pupil fully so that you allow a uh, more amount of light to enter your eye so that you can be able to see even tiny objects within that particular room. Then the image formed by the eye is usually real because it is formed, that is, it is formed on the retina, so it is formed on the screen. Therefore, it is a real image and not a virtual image. Then accommodation is simply refers to the ability of the eye to focus both near and distant objects and bring them to focus on the retina. So for example, you can see in this particular case, these are incident rays which are of course from the object then when they reach to our convex length, of course, they are focused onto the retina. So the ability of the eye to focus both near and distant. Distant simply means objects that are far away from us. So the ability of the eye to focus both near and distant objects and bring them to focus on the retina. That is to focus them on the retina so as to form the image. That is what we call accommodation. Similarly, the term accommodation can as well be defined as the process of the eye lens being adjusted to focus objects at various distances. That is objects that are either far or near to us. Now, there are two main defects of vision. So the first defect is what we call the short sight or what we call the short sightedness, which is usually also called myopia. So of course, if a person is suffering from short sightedness, such a person is said to be myopic. So. Uh, Short-sightedness is simply a defect where the eye can only see clearly near objects but not the ones that are far away from us. So objects that are closer to you, you'll be able to see them clearly but objects that are far away from you, you won't be able to see them. So that is a defect called short-sightedness or myopia. So like for example, you can see for this particular case, these are rays from near objects. So for the objects that are closer to you, you are able to see them clearly. Why? Because the rays from those particular objects are simply focused on the retina. Remember when the, the retina has what we call the cells, which are sensitive to the light. Therefore, if the image is focused on the retina, you'll be able to see that particular image clearly. However, if you have rays which are coming from distant objects or objects which are far away, from that particular observer, then this is what will happen for the case of a person who is short-sighted. So those particular incident rays of light are going to be focused uh, at a point which is in front of the retina, at a point which is in front of the retina. So the image is formed in front of the retina as shown in this particular case. Remember the retina is usually on the eyeball, which is at this particular point at the further end of our eyeball. So the defect is usually caused by the, uh, the, the, the eye lens having a very short focal length. Remember, the focal length is simply the distance from uh, the point of intersection of this particular rays up to the length. So like for this case, the focal length will be equal to this distance from here up to this particular point here. So you can see the focal length is very short such that the incident rays are actually uh, being brought to focus at a point in that is 
in front of that particular retina so you can see the retina is here but the rays are intersecting here so the image will be formed at this particular point however that image will be blurred you will just see multiple images which are overlapping each other therefore you won't be able to see clearly th that particular image so the image can only be seen clearly when it is formed on the retina because it is only the retina that has cells that are very sensitive to any light of course that is coming uh, from that particular object so the image is formed in front of the retina then the defect is caused by the eye that is the eye lens having a very short uh, focal length such as the one shown in this particular case such that uh, the rays cannot be brought to focus at the retina the other cause of short-sightedness is the eyeball being too long so remember if the eyeball is too long remember the eyeball is this particular circular uh, part here which is looks like the uh, the normal ball so this is what we are calling the eyeball so if the eyeball is too long that means that the retina the position of the retina will also be far away from the principal focus so if the eyeball is too long also the probability of those rays being brought to focus before that is in front of the retina will be very high and once the rays are not meeting at the retina no clear image will be formed the image formed is actually uh, virtual or simply blurred those are simply multiple images which are overlapping each other so the causes of short-sightedness is the eye lens having a short focal length or the eyeball being too long then short-sightedness is corrected by using a concave or a diverging length as shown in this particular diagram so you can see our diverging length will simply diverge these rays remember the rays were coming to focus at this particular point but if you add a concave lens or a diverging lens it is going to diverge these rays such that they come and meet at the retina so you can see the incident rays when they go through that is when they go through the concave length or the diverging length they are actually diverged such that they are brought to focus at the uh, retina of that particular um, of that particular eye so once the rays that is the incident rays are brought to focus at the retina the image will be clearly seen because we have said that the retina has cells that are sensitive to the light so the image will be clearly seen so you need to know uh, what causes short-sightedness and you also need to know how to solve it so if you want to correct if you want to correct um, short-sightedness you simply because you have said that it is uh, brought about by either having a short focal length or the eyeball being too long if you want to correct it you simply use a concave or a diverging length which will diverge the rays of light so that to prevent them from meeting in front of the retina and making them to meet at the retina so as to form a very clear image next our second eye defect is called long sight also called long sightedness or also called hypermetropia so this is a defect where the eye can see distant objects clearly but not near ones so uh, if an object is far away from the observer he will be able to see it clearly but if an object is very close to the observer he won't be able to see it clearly so the image is formed behind the retina and hence appears blurred so blurred simply means that the observer will just see multiple images which are overlapping each other so you can see if we have rays from near objects if an object is placed very close to the observer then this is what will happen rays from near objects will actually be focused behind the retina or behind that particular uh, retina so if the image is formed behind the retina it won't be able to be seen clearly because we say that it is only the retina which has cells which are light sensitive so rays from distant objects are focused on the retina clearly as shown so if you have rays from distant objects that is objects which are far away from our lens then such rays will actually be focused on the retina hence the person will be able to see uh, the image formed clearly because it is only the retina that has cells which are light sensitive so if an image is formed either um, beyond the retina or behind the retina or before the retina such an image won't be clearly seen but if an image is formed on the retina it will be seen because the retina has cells which are light sensitive that is they are able to detect uh, light and and cause the formation of the image on that particular retina then the cause of this defect is either the focal length of the lens being too long for example you can see in this particular case remember focal length is the distance from the optical center of this particular lens 
up to the principal focus, which is simply the point of intersection of maybe rays from a distant object. So if the focal length is too long, it simply means that um, the image will be formed at a distance which is far away from the retinas or the image will be formed behind the retina such as this one here. For example, in this case, the focal length will be the distance from the optical center or up to the point of intersection of this particular ray. So you can see that the focal length is too long. That is why the rays are coming to intersect behind the length and the image is not formed on the retina. Another cause of long-sightedness is the eyeball being too short. So if the eyeball is too short, that is in relation to the focal length of the uh, crystalline length used in that particular eye, if the eyeball is too short, again, it means that uh, the rays from any, that is from near objects would always be, be formed behind the retina. If rays are meeting behind the retina, that means the image is being formed behind the retina and such an image won't be clear because the image can only be clear if it is formed on the retina because of the, uh, the cells, the light sensitive cells that the retina possesses. So if you're asked to state any two causes of long sightedness, one cause would be the focal length of the lens being too long or the other cause is the eyeball being too short such that uh, the image is formed behind the retina. So how to correct it? You simply use a convex or a converging lens that is to bring these particular rays which are being formed behind the retina uh, to actually that particular retina. So you can see in this case we are using a convex lens or a converging lens. So instead of the rays going behind the retina, this particular convex lens is going to converge them on the retina. So this is how we correct long sightedness or hypermetropia. So it is corrected using a convex or a converging lens. So the lens slightly uh, converges the rays before they reach the eye. So the rays appearing uh, to come from all, that is from the, uh, from the object or the, yeah, from the object are then brought to focus on the retina. So this is how we correct, uh, that is what we call hypermetropia or long sightedness. So you simply use a convex lens or a converging lens, which will converge this particular ray so that instead of being formed behind the retina, they'll be converged on the retina. Remember, if rays are meeting on the retina, that is when the image is being formed on the retina, the retina has the light sensitive cells. Therefore, you'll be able to see a very clear image, which is noted by capital I in this particular case. Then the fourth um, application, that is the fourth and the last application of thin lenses is in the camera. So a camera is simply a device used to take photographs. So it uses a convex lens to focus light from an object to form an image on the film. So the film is simply a point whereby the images are formed within that particular camera. So you can be asked to state the purpose of the film. So it is simply a point where the images are formed in a camera. Then focusing is usually done by adjusting the distance between the lens and the film. So the distance between this particular film and of course our lens. So uh, if you reduce or you increase the distance between the lens or and the film, you are simply uh, focusing. So focusing is done by adjusting the distance between um, the lens and the film or simply moving the camera towards or away from that particular object. So again, the camera has a light tight box blackened on the inside to absorb any stray light. So remember, black materials are good absorbers also of, of also heat and of course light. So uh, they are painted black to absorb any stray light. That is the light that would, could be going or traveling in the direction which is not desired. So uh, the tight box, they are blackened. On the inside, the reason is to absorb any stray light. Then it also has a shutter which simply controls the exposure time. So of course, this is our shutter. Then it also has a diaphragm, which is also called a stop, which simply controls or regulates the amount of light entering the camera, or it simply uh, controls the intensity or regulates the intensity of the light entering that particular camera. So this, the lens system, it consists of the lens and of course the diaphragm, which is also called the stop. So you can also be drawn this particular diagram, then somebody will ask you to name the part. So we have the spool here, we have the film, we have the shutter, we have the our convex length, this is our convex length, then of course 
the diaphragm which controls the amount of light that is entering this particular camera. Then let's look at the similarities between the eye and the camera. So the first similarity is that the eye has a crystalline convex lens which simply converges the rays of light from the object towards the retina. Similarly, the camera has a convex lens which converges the rays of light from the object towards the film of the camera. Then for the case of the eye, the choroid layer of the eye is usually black. Similarly, the camera box is painted black inside. Of course, the purpose is simply to absorb any stray rays of light. Then for the case of the eye, the eye has the retina where the images are usually formed. Similarly, the camera has a light sensitive film where the images are usually formed. Then the iris controls the amount of light entering the eye. Similarly, for the case of the camera, the diaphragm controls the amount of light entering the camera. Then the differences between the eye and the camera, the first difference is that the focal length of the eye lens is variable. That is, it can be changed. It can be increased or reduced, while the focal length of the camera is usually fixed. Then the second difference is that for the case of the camera, especially those cameras with the zoom lenses, they have variable image distances. That is, you can vary the distance between that particular length and where the image will be formed. While for the case of the eye, it has a constant image distance. That is the distance from the retina up to uh, the crystalline convex length within that particular eye. It cannot be varied. That is, it is a fixed distance and that represents the image distance. Then the third difference is that only one photograph can be taken at a time when the shutter of the camera opens. But for the case of the eye, the eye is always open to form constantly changing pictures. So the camera can only form one picture at a time. But for the case of the eye, it can form several images. That is, it is usually open uh, to form constantly changing pictures. So we've come to the end of our class today, but you need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that life is an echo. Whatever you choose to send out will always come back to you in an expected way. So the quote is encouraging us to be mindful of the type of energy we release to the world. Remember that if you give out negative energy to others, then expect to receive the same negative energy from them or from the world. Similarly, if you give out positive energy to others or to the world, then expect the same positive energy uh, to be given to you from the world. Therefore, I encourage you to show kindness, compassion, gratitude, and empathy and care to the people around you because nature has its own way of rewarding you with the same same positive values that you give others. And lastly, recall that when a bird is alive, it eats the ants. When the bird dies, the ants eat the dead bird. Similarly, one tree can produce a million matchsticks, but only one matchstick can burn a million trees. So in life, circumstances can change at any given time. Therefore, do not, do not look down upon anyone in life or hurt anyone in this life because you may be powerful today, but time is more powerful than you are. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. So we've come to the last lesson of the first topic of Form 4 work, which is called Thin Lenses. So in our next class, we shall be starting the second chapter of Form 4 work, which is called Uniform Circular Motion. Thank you for the continued support. Thank you for the positive comments that I'm receiving. I really, really appreciate. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.